The next major topic in voltaic cells is uh, cell notation. Um, this is important because basically it's too difficult to draw the cell out completely when you want to try to describe what's going on in an electrochemical cell. So we have to do, we have to come up with a shorthand for that's efficient and it tells you exactly what's going on in your cell without necessarily having to draw the entire picture. So for the cell that we looked at in the previous slide, the correct notation for that cell would look something like this. We would have zinc solid with a line, and then we would have zinc 2 plus aqueous, and then we would have a concentration associated with that, so that would be like one molar. And then we would have two lines, then we would have copper 2 plus aqueous with a concentration of one molar with a line, and then copper. So this would be the proper cell notation for that cell. So let's start to dissect this. Uh, on the left side of this, we have the anode. So when you want to write an anode, um, that's going to be on the left. And then on the right, we have the cathode. And you'll notice that the electrodes are on the outside. And the electrolytes are on the inside. And then this line here, this denotes what we call a phase boundary. So basically we have a solid, and then in the electrolyte we have a uh, we have the aqueous solution with the zinc two plus. So that is the that is the place where the zinc solid touches the zinc two plus. And so we know that in that half cell we have a zinc metal electrode going in and we have a zinc 2 plus solution with a concentration of one molar. Now, uh, on the same the same is true for the other side. So this is the electrode and then this is the electrolyte. And the cathode is just written in the other direction. So for the the anode, the electrode is on the left and for the cathode the electrode is on the right. Now what's in the middle here is this double line. This denotes the salt bridge. So this structure sort of makes sense because you have to look at what's connected in the electrochemical cell. So if we kind of draw up a little picture here of the electrochemical cell, we have the electrodes that are going into the two electrolytes and those are connected by a wire. So that wire is denoted by being on the outside. Um, so you can imagine that this the wire that connects the two goes to the outside. So although we don't normally write that, um, we don't actually write the, that wire thing there. Um, you can see why, because those two are connected to each other and if that's going to the outside of the cell. So that's why the electrodes go on the outside. And then on the inside, we have the electrolytes and they're connected to each other by the salt bridge. So you can see why we put them together in the middle and then we have the salt bridge connection. So in essence, this notation is drawing out the cell without having to actually physically draw the whole cell. So now let's look at a couple of um, let's look at a couple of, th of specialty things that you have to to think about. So um, if you wanted to write the half reaction, so how do we write so how do we write a half reaction from the cell notation? Well, if it's on the left, then we know it's the anode. and it's going to be an oxidation. So what you would do is you would take your zinc and you would take your zinc 2 plus plus two electrons and you'd write that as the uh, as the oxidation reaction. So this reaction would correspond to this half cell notation. Now if we had it the other way around If we had this reaction, zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to zinc, we would have it the other way around. We would have zinc 2 plus aqueous, and then the zinc solid would go on the other side, denoting that it was the um, cathode. So that's that. I just wanted to point that out. Now let's look at half reactions that involve some specialty stuff. So uh, half reactions with inert electrodes. 
So here's an example. Uh, 2H plus plus two electrons goes to H2 gas. And in this case, there's a the electrode is a platinum piece of wire or or foam or whatever, a piece of platinum uh, mesh or something like that. So it's a, a platinum electrode. So in this case, we have a, a couple of different things going on. We have gas, we have an aqueous uh, phase, and we have a platinum electrode. So how do we write this? Well, first of all, we have to recognize that this is a reduction. So the electrode is going to go on the outside. So the platinum electrode is going to go on the outside. And then we put a phase boundary. Now for gases, gases are going to go next. So then we put H2 gas. And then on the innermost side, we put the, the uh, we don't need the two. We just put the H plus aqueous and the concentration of, let's say, for example, one molar. So this would be the proper cell notation for um, that platinum electrode where we have 2H plus plus two electrons with a platinum electrode goes to H2. Now the way that you can kind of envision this would be if we had a cell where there was platinum going in, we had uh, H plus in solution, and we had some H2 bubbles being formed coming out. So let's just look at why we have it in this order. So the platinum electrode goes on the outside because this is what's connected to the outside of the cell. The H2 goes in the middle because the H2 is not connected by the salt bridge to the other solution. Only the electrolyte is in the salt bridge. So the H2 goes in the middle here because it's not really connected to the salt bridge. What it is connected to is the platinum and it is connected to the H plus in solution, but it's not connected via the salt bridge. So the H plus goes on the, on the inside here because this is what's connected at the salt bridge is the aqueous solution. So let's look at another one where we, um, let's look at another one where we can write um, the reaction. Uh, let's, let's look at one where we write the, um, the notation and then try to come up with a reaction for it. So let's get a clean sheet. So here's an example where we have that. Let's do platinum um, with Fe2 plus aqueous comma Fe3 plus aqueous and then we have the, the salt bridge in the middle. So now the first thing we have to do to write, so now we're going to write a half reaction from the notation. So how do we do this? Well, first things first, we have to identify whether this is an oxidation or a reduction. So this one is, we're going to identify as an oxidation. So the electrode is on the outside and it's on the left. So that's what tells us that it's an oxidation. So the platinum is not, in this case, we would say that the platinum is just a catalyst or it is, we would tell you something like the platinum is a catalyst or the platinum is the electrode, the platinum facilitates the redox reaction. Something like that would tell you that platinum is not actually electrochemically active. Um, so we're going to have to write this as an oxidation. So we have two species in solution. Now you'll notice that I've done something here um, with this that you haven't seen yet, but I'm showing it to you now. You see that we have Fe2 plus aqueous and Fe3 plus aqueous. When you see this and we have a comma, that means that these two things are in the solution. So the way that you could envision this uh, cell, this half cell, would be that you have a solution with Fe2 plus and with Fe3 plus, and then you have a platinum electrode that's dipped in. So now if we have to write this as an oxidation, we know that we have to go from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. And the reason is because we're now oxidizing iron from iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus. So we're going to get plus one electron. Now, in this case, we're going to put the platinum over this because it's an inert metal and it's just facilitating the reaction. It's just basically giving us a surface to work with to do that. So this would be the anode form. And if we wanted to write the cathode form, we would flip our cell notation around. So we would have Fe2 plus aqueous, uh, comma Fe3 plus aqueous, put a line, and then we would put our platinum on the outside. And then our reaction for the cathode form would be that Fe3 plus plus one electron goes to Fe2 plus. So that gives you a sense of um, 
how this works and what we're what we're looking for. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take a look at some examples of this where we work out the anode, the cathode, and the complete reaction. So lecture problem four um, looks at writing half reactions and balanced complete reactions for cells. So now what we're going to see is we're going to see the notation for a cell, and it's going to be our job to do the anode, the cathode, and the full cell. So let's start on each with the anode and the cathode. Okay, so we're going to identify that this one is the anode and that this one is the cathode, and they're separated by the salt bridge. So let's start by writing the anode. We have Tl solid, and since this is an oxidation, we have to have it going to the more oxidized state of Tl+. plus. So Tl solid goes to Tl plus plus one electron. So that's going to be our anode reaction. Now, for the tin, this is going to be our cathode, which is going to be a reduction. So we get tin 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives tin. So you're using the species um, to tell you what's going to be on the left and right side of the reaction, and then you just put in the number of electrons based on how many electrons are changed from the species. That's how I'm doing this. So I'm not making these things up. I'm just taking them directly from the notation. So the TL and the TL plus come from there and the TIN 2 plus and the TIN come from there. So you don't have to make this up on your own. You just have to um, think about this kind of carefully. So now when we want to combine these two, we have to multiply the top one by two to get that to work out. So the complete reaction for this is going to be that 2TL solid plus TIN 2 plus aqueous gives a 2TL plus aqueous plus tin solid. Okay, and the reason why I multiply by 2 is just to make sure that the electrons balance out. So let's look at the next one. So we have anode and we have cathode. And let's take a look. So the anode one is pretty easy in this case. So we've got zinc and we've got zinc 2 plus. So we're going to put two electrons here to balance it out. So the zinc and the zinc 2 plus, the way I know that this is going to be an oxidation is because it's on the left. So that means that I have to put the more oxidized species as a product since it's an oxidation. And then I put the number of electrons to balance it out. Now the cathode in this case. So if we're doing a reduction, I'm going to put my more oxidized species on the left because it's going to gain an electron to give Fe2+. And we put our platinum over that to... Um, to facilitate that reaction. So the platinum in this case, like I said, this is a catalyst for that reaction um, in the previous slide. So you know when you see platinum, that's gonna be a catalyst. And um, you're gonna get something that looks like this. So again, we have to balance our electrons out, so we're gonna multiply that by two. So we get zinc plus uh, two Fe3 plus goes to, uh, with platinum as the electrode catalyst in the middle, gives zinc two plus plus two Fe2 plus. And so then we're going to put solid, aqueous, aqueous, solid. Oh, I'm sorry, aqueous. Okay, let's look at the last one. So the last one has cadmium solid and cadmium 2 plus, and then it has H plus and H2 gas. So the anode in this case is going to be our cadmium reaction. So cadmium is going to go to cadmium 2 plus plus two electrons. Now the cathode is a little bit more difficult. So we have three phases here. We have the solid electrode, which is a catalyst. We have the H plus and we have the H2 gas. So we have a phase boundary between the H plus and the H2 gas. H plus goes all the way to the left because it's touching the salt bridge in the cell. The H2 gas is touching the platinum. It's also touching the solution, but it's not touching the salt bridge. So now let's write our reduction. So we start with our more oxidized species. And then we write our less oxidized species on the right. Now here we have to pay a little bit of attention. We need to put in two H plus to balance out the number of H's. So um, you got to make sure you have mass balance. And then we are going to put in two electrons um, to balance out the charge. So that's how you'd write the cathode reaction. And then so what you're going to get is you're going to get cadmium solid plus two H plus aqueous gives cadmium two plus aqueous plus H2 gas. So that's how you work with half reactions and um, writing half reactions and coming up with balanced equations from half reactions.